Okay, so in this tutorial, we'll see how to convert this uh, GetHex app, which is this one over here, to a Riverpod app. Well, what I mean by that, so as you can see over here, our values are reactive, so we can change anytime. And if you go to a new page over here, we can access them, okay? So our job is to convert them using Riverpod. So let's go ahead and do that. Now make sure to be able to use Riverpod, you have installed Riverpod. So you have to have Riverpod installed and at the same time the package equitable. It should be installed as well. All right, now we're gonna start everything from app state over here. Now we know that for GetX we used, uh, created a class and we separated the variables that are observable. Now with the Riverpod actually we are going to do the same. Now, first we're gonna remove this. We don't need to write it like this. And over here, we are going to extend equitable class, equitable, this one. Now with this, we need to override something, a uh, list of objects that we need to override. Now over here at the top, we are going to create a variable. So it would be final int and count or counter like previously we had okay so this is the one that we want to have now since this is a class over here we want to initialize it inside a constructor so over here we do const app states and inside this we would do counter equal equal zero so as this class constructor gets called for the first time we'll initialize this all right and uh, okay now let's reformat the code so that we look good all right now over here inside this we're going to mention the properties that should be observable now we do it inside a list like this counter now we don't need this we can say yes there is an object that is observable so with this we say that hey we'll have an object and that should be observable or a variable in our case that is counter now this looks very different than getx right with getx you could get the job done with a single line of code just declare a variable and tag it as obs all right now we want to create another method and the method would return app state type which means return an object of itself and we'll call the method over here copy with now this is a convention to call it like this now inside this we'll have int counter variable that would be passed through now or we'll call this method from our controller to change this value Here we'll return the same object the one did for constructor. So over here we'd simply do app state and inside this we'll create a positional parameter which is counter and then we'll check the given parameter which is this one. If this is not null we'll use this. Otherwise we'll use this dot counter which means that earlier value or the previous value. Now this method copy with would be called from button click. Okay, so as we click on one of the buttons, this method somehow will call and then either increment the value or decrement the value, okay? Anyway, we have an error because we are changing it. So with this, we are done with this app state class over here. So it's very different than getx. So you have to pretty much like uh, uh, create your own mechanism or a method for interacting and make your variable observable so with this app states has been done now we'll go to app controller over here I'm gonna comment out all of this I'm gonna I'm not going to delete them because I'm going to show you the comparison that how it works and how they are similar now over here instead of get X controller we are going to use state notifier now state notifier should take a type of state. So over here our state type is app state, the one that we created. Now let's go ahead and see. Now it says that go ahead and create a 
constructor to call super okay it's saying you should create a constructor to call super constructor so let's go ahead and do that but definitely we are not going to do like this so over here we would call super and then inside this we'll call app state and that's it now this was pretty much like early where you did like uh, this one as you see so you called the stateful class which was app state right which means that the one that was holding our data now in this case we have to do it differently but the idea is same so you still have to call this one but using super constructor now what is state notifier state notifier actually helps you change the data now our data is over here now you you wouldn't directly change this data you would change this data from here now earlier we said that we'll call this method to change the data now actually this method would call from here inside this state notifier now state notifier is a part of flutter framework not really part of riverport but actually riverport internally uses this one uh, so we are good to go now state notifier actually notifies the states that hey your value has been changed so that's why it's called state notifier now state notifier would be all, also would notify our ui but there is a mechanism to do that which we'll do very soon so over here you can see that it says that hey notify that state has changed okay so this is the comparison and this is how you should understand it now in general it should take a state type our states over here the type is app state so over here we return app state type when we change we also return app state type you have to remember but now i'm going to remove this this section has been done now over here in GetX, we have done it like this. So how to do it similarly with the river pod? Now, with the river pod over here, we'll have a variable which is called state. Now, actually, this is not really with the river pod, this is coming from state notify itself. Now, inside this, we'll have like this state dot copy with this one. Copy with, we can call this one copy with. And then we have a positional parameter which is called counter. And then we do state dot counter plus one like this by right here we could do it like this int counter which makes more sense okay now with this the arrow should be gone now as we call now you can ask you may ask what is this state variable okay now earlier we have seen a variable which is called controller controller if we use get x right and that was over here actually you'd see this variable controller so we had it early now if you use a state notifier your controller actually or state notifier class which is this app controller this automatically gets state object now if it's gets the state object it can access the other state app state properties or the variables or the methods that's defined in a special class so once again this state object is available because of state notifier so if you double click on this actually you'll see that there is an object which is called state okay this one now this is also a getter object so which means that we'd be directly call it and use it so and that's what we did now once you use that one the state can access every properties and methods from your state class of it makes sense now copy with is a name and a function that returns an object like this that we created now we take the earlier value if we want to increment and then we do plus one hopefully it makes sense so this is more like this one but of course this is get x way and this is a river pod way now we're going to copy this one and uh, put it here and this time we want to decrement okay so it should make sense this is another thing something called a provider so we have to go ahead and create provider provider means it will help you to access the shared data so in river pod it is called provider in getx you may heard the word shared state or shared data but the idea is same but of course in getx you don't have to do a special mechanism you just over here have get view 
and assign your controller type and then you are good to go but here we have to create a special variable you can name it anything we'll call it app provider and then inside this here we need to call state notifier provider this one now state notifier provider takes the apps uh, notifier type which is which is app controller and then notifier state which is app states this one and after that you could just simply return like this so here we'd say app controller and then you are good to go so what what we are telling okay so create a variable that is globally available and that variable we can use in our ui and this variable should hold our provider and what does that mean that means that everything we created over here like controller and states that should be held or that should be inside this app provider so if we can access app provider we would be able to access this methods we would be able to access the state variable so that's the idea so if you can access the method you can change the variable if you can access the object you can also access this counter variable or the properties from here state notifier provider is coming from actually riverpod as you can see riverpod so this is not directly coming from flutter or provider itself so creating a shared state and returning it is also called creating a provider so that's how they name it so provider means it gives you something that give you it gives you provider it gives you shared state so that's why they call it provider so with this all you need to do just to return a class that should be able to access or interact with your states that's all now with this we are almost ready now we should come to our app state screen over here now inside over here inside instead of get view we're going to use the consumer widget now if you hover over on this it is coming from flutter river pod and it also extends the consumer stateful widget but consumer stateful widget actually extends stateful widget so that means eventually this widget or class becomes stateful now over here inside the build method we want to use a special object which is called widget ref now with the ref actually we would be able to access this provider now over here we don't need it like this anymore we don't need obx so let's go ahead and remove that all right and actually we also don't need anything like this so at the top over here we want to access our provider and over here we'll create a variable and we'll call it data this ref object ref object should be available in general if you extend consumer widget now we can use the watch method to get the value whatever the value is there in our provider we can get that one now inside this we can access our app provider so in general if you have a provider if you use riverpod definitely you'll have a provider and in your ui you have to use ref.watch or ref.read to access the provider if you can do that eventually you will have access to all of this and all of this now inside this we can just simply do data.counter now as you see we already access the counter variable which means that eventually we are accessing this variable over here now how about this one so we don't need this increment method right but yes we'll have them but river pod way and after that with app provider over here you want to use an object which is called notifier now this comes directly from provider and then over here you can simply call the increment method and that's all so if you want to access provider methods or properties like this too you can just simply go ahead and do ref.read 
and app provider dot notifier. So the way we understand it, the way I understand it, notifier over here is actually going to notify that my value is going to change. So notify everyone related to it. Now over here we are going to do the same ref dot read and then here we'll have app provider app provider and then we'll get notifier object and then we'll have decrement and we are good to go all right now we need to find our another screen one was using getx as you can see to access the shared state now instead of doing like this once again we'll use consumer widget consumer consumer widget and we'll have build method and inside build method we have to access widget ref ref now over here we don't want to access it like this so we can just simply come over here and uh, copy whatever we had all right so this of course over here you can't access like this either you have to access the provider so how to do that over here we do var data and then watch dot ref dot watch ref dot watch and then inside this we'll call our app provider and now the error should be gone so this time we are going to completely use riverpod to do this counter example now over here we just simply remove this we don't need this with this this controller was available to all the widgets in our widget tree now we need to do the same for riverpod but not that way it has special syntax a special way of doing you have to wrap it using something called provider scope this one and then provider a river pod actually would be available to all the widgets in your app now we are going to restart it now over here we are going to do like this and decrease as you see it's working now if you current value is 4 if you come over here you'll see that it's 4 now you can decrease it if you come over here you see it's 2 you can increase that it still works all right so that's how actually you understand and work with riverpod thank you